Well, look outside. The sun is shining. You can see Mount Hood from downtown Portland, and this is part of the climbing season there. As incredible as the mountain is, though, it quickly can turn deadly. And 36 years ago, it did. In May of 1986, seven students and two staff members from the Oregon Episcopal School died on Mount Hood. It was one of the worst climbing disasters in U.S. history. And now a local author is remembering the tragedy in a new podcast. Chris McGinnis takes us into the KGW Vault. In the pre-dawn hours of Monday, May 12, 1986, a group of 15 high school students and five adults left Timberline Lodge, plotting the most climbed route on one of the most climbed mountains in the world. You're seeing some of the last known photos of the climbers. A few hours later, mid-climb, the party was enveloped in a late spring blizzard on Oregon's highest peak. Uh, we've got reports of 60 mile an hour winds, uh, visibility of maybe 20 feet. Uh, it's, it's a wide out. This is KGW footage from that day. Seven turned around early. The 13 who continued did so through worsening weather. Realizing they couldn't make it down safely, they dug in for the night. They had no idea where they were. Battling blinding snow and freezing wind, two of the party would make a desperate escape to get help at first light Tuesday morning. Well, we were trying to find our way back down. We had some problems with hypothermia with kids and um, got lost on our way down trying to use a compass and we, could, <clears throat> we couldn't see. Molly Shula and hired guide Ralph Summers escaped and found themselves all the way over at Mount Hood Meadows. They were brought up to Timberline to help rescuers locate the 11 other climbers sheltering in an undersized, hastily dug snow cave. I got a chance to interview Barry Wright, one of the senior members of Portland Mountain Rescue. Barry recalls that day. Very vague uh, descriptions from Ralph Summers. On He had no idea where he came from, how he got to where he, he came off the mountain at. Uh, when our rescuers had to be up on, on their hands and knees to keep from being blown around on the mountain, uh, it kind of said something about how bad the weather was. We sent our teams into the high priority areas. We sent teams to the left, we sent teams to the right. We sent teams up, up, on the mount, up higher up on the mountain to check higher up. The storm finally broke the next day. The conditions, surreal. 11 climbers lost in the fresh deep snow as the sun shone brilliantly Wednesday morning. Search teams located three of the missing climbers high up on the White River Glacier. There was miscommunication between rescue crews as to whether these climbers were alive. Hope turned to despair. Three teens had spent the night underdressed on top of the snow. These people here are two of the subjects that earlier were described as fatalities. They're being rushed in their state. Which is? Frozen at this point to the hospital for a doctor who is awaiting them and to give them emergency care. Classmates, the climbing community, the whole city of Portland held vigil as helicopters lifted the first three climbers to Portland's Emanuel Hospital on Wednesday, where long shot life-saving measures were used. Back on the mountain, there was still no sign of the other eight climbers, and searchers moved on to other locations. The sun was blinding, the weather was spectacular, and teams of rescuers crisscrossed the search area, deep probing for hours. With this team going up, they're going to continue the search, and then um, we're going to go in, take a break, and go back up until the light fails. Dawn broke on Thursday. Choppers in the air, search dogs and rescuers on the snow resumed their work all day. The exhaustion of the rescuers was visible. I, stayed, I was up for almost straight through 36 hours, 48 hours, three days almost without any sleep and it, it definitely paid, it took its toll. Then at approximately 5.15 p.m., after a long day of probing the deep snow with 10-foot poles, searchers found something the equipment cache. The climbers left it outside their cave. About 20 minutes later, digging up four feet of fresh snow, the entrance to the snow cave was located. 8,200 feet on the White River Glacier, mere feet 
from where one of the first climbers was located 36 hours earlier. Second patient's rate is a 30, copy. Oh, copy. How was it? He, <sighs> he's shaky, but he was conscious. He was looking at us, he knew we had him. One by one, the patients were brought down from the cave, then rushed to one of five awaiting Portland hospitals. The chances were slim. Core temperatures were unbelievably low. Ultimately, seven teenagers and two adults died. I get pretty emotional if I, if I got into some of the details, but uh, I really think, actually I had the opportunity to help move one of the kids from the rescue hop helicopters to the, the medical helicopters. What sticks with you the most 36 years later? Uh, probably the effect that it had on, on, uh, on, on I, the way I thought about it. I, mean, it, it, I probably, I tried to avoid thinking about it because it brought back such intense memories of, of what was going on. Barry Wright slowly retreated from his role at Portland Mountain Rescue. Oregon author Rick Conrad reached out to him in 2014. What was the motivation for the book? Well, I was a recreational climber in the 90s and everybody remembers this tragedy and I kept waiting for someone to write the book and the years turned into decades and I'm like these uh, search and rescue workers are aging. This needs to be told. And I finally just took up the baton myself. That book, Code 1244, the 1986 Mount Hood tragedy, was released late in 2019. It has been turned into a five episode podcast against the odds trapped on Mount Hood. Visibility has dropped to less than 50 feet. They're in a near total whiteout. The final episode was released on Tuesday, June 14th. I know it's an important story, but I also want people to remember the volunteer efforts that went into this search and rescue operation. The sheriff's report says there was about 114 people involved. My research has shown there's at least 167. And I, I just want to give a public thank you to the rescue community for responding to this tragedy.